we talked a little bit on the depressing side, how people were losing interest in democracy as the Afrobarometer measures show. But something has been happening, not just in Nigeria, but across the continent. The last five or so major elections in Africa have seen the incumbents, the powerful, the establishment beaten by people whose parties are not even established in some cases okay. six months before the election. Okay. Like Kenya. You know, Kenya is there, Lesotho, Lesotho yeah. you know, Malawi. But, you know, so nothing is clear. Yeah. The African people are fed up with the established order. They know it hasn't taken them very far. Africans have seen Asians that they were ahead of. Zambians were ahead of Koreans in the 50s. Now the Koreans helped them out. We've seen Malaysia yeah. had in 57 as Ghana was becoming independent. Malaysia was ahead of, and Ghana was ahead of yeah, Malaysia. That's right. And today it's complete reverse. You don't want to talk of almighty Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and I have been part of delegations that went to Malaysia and sat with Malaysian officials who said, you know, we came and took palm seedlings from West Africa. They didn't want to mention where directly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the 60s, uh, and we are glad Nigeria is now exporting, uh, uh, buying so much palm oil from us. <laughs> you know, um, so Africans have seen all of this happen because mm -hmm. of poor leadership. And, and Prof, you know, uh, later uh, Fred Brume, I had a chat with him. Uh, may he so rest in peace. You know, he told me that he was one of the World Bank um, delegates to, you know, the uh, planning strategy, economic strategy for South Korea, and he worked for them. Yeah. And he was also part of Nigeria's own. And I asked him, why hasn't it worked? Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, we're having this conversation somewhere out of the country uh, not long ago with a group of Asians. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had it, we repeated it actually when uh, the United Nations officials from UNDP called on Mr. Peter Rubi in Abuja last week, uh, I was uh, at that round table. Mm -hmm. And one of the points that just came out of discussion was Asia, even South Korea, you know, within Asia. Yeah. There was a famous World Bank um, planner, economist called Mabubul Haq. Okay. Mabubul Haq was Pakistani. All right. And he's giving much credit for South Korea's triumph. Yeah, yeah. And the question was, why did Mabu Hak not <laughs> do for his for country <laughs> what he did for the Koreans? <laughs> and, and, and really, truly speaking, yeah. uh, a thesis was thrown up in that conversation, mm. which said that the difference between, say, Pakistan and South Korea was that the state in South Korea was sufficiently stronger than individual contesting elites. Yeah. And that's part of Nigeria's problem. Nigeria's elite, yeah. with their various interests and their desire for state capture, yeah. are stronger than the Nigerian state. Yeah. So where, you, where the state isn't as strong as the contending elites, development is hard. Uh, and so you must have a new leadership that can rein in the elite and get a developmental state to emerge. That has not been able to happen in Nigeria yeah. because these warlords who come in different names. And, and in, in, in Pakistan, you discover that they have really officially accepted the bipolar system, mm. where you have the military recognized as part of the democratic mm. process. Mm. You know, yeah. And then um, they now come in and okay. you know, be part of the system. And but, the, the but I guess the main point is that our democracy has not worked mm -hmm. up till now. And that's, but suddenly last year, as has happened in these other African countries I will mention, people got more interested in democracy. The Afro-barometer must be blowing out now, you know, because people had given up. But then we had NSAS, That's a generation right. that is dominant, that is the majority. Nigeria is median age 18.1 or 2 or whatever. Mm. And those Nigerians who constitute by far the majority came out to say, we don't like how our country is running. <laughs> and this couple of old men decided, let's kill them. And so that really brought a new kind of anger yes. into Nigeria. Yeah. And those young people said, well, let's meet them at the polls. The result is the emergence of this thought force, mm. uh, which has thrown up Peter Obi and uh, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. Uh, and so far, you can see the difference in the campaign. 
Whereas Obi Dati have focused on issues in this campaign. Yeah. What are the issues that need to be engaged to do better for the Nigerian people? The APC, PDP, or is it APC, DC, or whatever? Yeah. I don't know what people call them these days. PDAPC. It, it, uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, my brain is not smart enough to capture all that stuff. <laughs> you know, I've just focused on insulting each other yeah. and digging up mud from everywhere, actually diminishing the Nigerian presidency. Exactly. Because, in my view, I would not respect the presidency of a country where all that they've said is that their potential leaders are all kinds of things we shouldn't print. I couldn't even speak to. Um, however, this process has come full steam to where we are. Mm -hmm. And so today, we're going to be taking on some of those issues that have resonated in the Obidati campaign. Uh, we're going to begin in a few minutes with power. There is nothing more fundamental than power That's right. to progress in terms of material creation of value. Yeah. Quality of life and, mm -hmm. you know. So, so besides the great social issues like education, uh, health, which are the essence of development, which we'll come back to later in the course of today's programming, power is what will enable us go from consumption to, to production. production. Yeah. So, uh, in a few minutes, uh, Dr. Jerome Okolo will join us. Now, let me explain where Dr. Jerome Okolo comes from. The structure, I mean, there's this thing about structure, who has structure, who doesn't have structure, mm. which has been somewhat amusing. The structure that the Obidati campaign organization has run on includes the structure of the Labour Party. It includes the structure of the big tent, which includes the Labour Party, several other political parties that are sympathetic to the thought force concept includes social movements, like labor movement, NLC, TUC, and that, right? It includes individual Nigerians, including some, several former heads of states, by the way, who don't want to belong to political parties, but are pleased to be part of bringing change about in Nigeria. Now, inside this big tent, there is something we'll call the policy review team. Feature view. And feature view. Policy review and feature view team. Uh, in some circumstances, people call, call, call this uh, the shadow, the shadow cabinet of sorts. You know, and I can't, I'm trying to play that role. Uh, we have focal persons for different government activities in these policy review teams. Uh, Dr. General Okolo, who's one of the most outstanding minds on power in Nigeria, is a focal person for power within that uh, working group. Yeah. Um, the last telethon, we had a Sheffield-based physician, um, Dr. Loretta Oduare Agboro Oko, spent quite some interesting time deep diving into the challenge of healthcare management in Nigeria. And we're going to lead off today. She led off last telethon. We're going to lead off today with power and have um, Dr. Jerome Okolo, who is a focal person for power, uh, coming here. Now, typically, each focal person relates to a deep dive team. And a deep dive team is made up of experts who are Nigerian. No matter where in the world they may be, uh, uh, in the power area we've had uh, um, amongst those who have been major inputers into uh, uh, policy or policy idea, some Nigerian based in Scotland, uh, in Aberdeen, uh, some in the United States, some locally here. And it's this group that uh, Dr. Okulu has to relate to, to firm up a position that's used to then advise the uh, candidates, Peter Ruby and Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, on what the ideal or the optimal choice should be 
in terms of policy around those areas. So Jerome will join us uh, uh, shortly. But the campaign so far, the Obidati team has tried to keep pushing the ideas on power, on uh, healthcare, on education, and all of this. It's not getting responses from the other parties. Mm -hmm. Instead, the other parties are more interested in who is the bigger thief. <laughs> uh, you know, how, can, how can we change Nigerian democracy to move from that, you are a bigger thief than me, to has ideas on how we can fix the problems facing the Nigerian people. Yeah, Prof, I'm actually wondering why people should support a candidate. You, Obi, will say you are looking for a job. You should go for an interview and present your credentials, why you should be employed for the job. You refuse to face the Nigerian people and tell them what you want to do as a president, and you still want them to vote for you. And some people are actually following these candidates who uh, has refused to come to any debate, to any forum, to say, this is what I want to do as a, as a president. Are we waiting to get another seven, eight years of what we have today, where the president didn't go to anywhere, didn't talk to anybody, and eventually became a president, and we can't hold him responsible, accountable to anything? I, I just pray we don't get back to that, what we had in 2015, 2019, back again. Candidates B is going to everywhere, even when the current candidates have not gone to, even in their own states. Obi was in Mubi, has gone to everywhere in Nigeria, talking to people, trying to sell his policies and what he wants to do as a, as a candidate as a, when he gets into power. But, but and the rest are fighting I, themselves. I, I can tell you that uh, he has frightened me by some of those moves. Uh, <laughs> fortunately yeah. or unfortunately for me, I had to go with him <laughs> to those places. And sometimes, I mean, we're in a helicopter yeah. flying through what is traditional Boko Haram territory. I was saying, Oh Lord. Oh no, oh, yes. <laughs> that is <new. laughs> you know, but, but this is commitment, I guess. Yeah. You know, it, it is. Deep commitment. Uh, and, and, you know, the, um, there's so much energy in the system. You know, Obi campaign, Obi Daddy campaign has brought so much energy. People are now interested. People are now committed. Online. The young ones particularly. This is their thing. This is their thing. And that's why we are also calling on them to take back the country, their country. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in the evening of our lives. Right? And yeah, this is the future. Okay? So it is important for them to come out. And the energy prof, even at the Lagos uh, rally, it was so huge. Won yesterday all over. It was huge, bro. In fact, there was, and, and then the reaction from the um, uh, area boys, you know, I don't know. That's, that's another part of this whole campaign story mm. that needs to be reviewed and Nigerian state needs to respond to. The violence yeah. that was meted on people who just wanted to go and express, express themselves about how they think their country should be run. Stab wounds, deep, and it's not just like slight deep stab wounds windscreens uh, broken should, should people who mm. encourage violence as i mean we know the history of uh people being blocked from voting yeah through using all kinds of means even penetrating i uh, i next systems to confuse uh, uh voting stations in the past such that you show up and say ah, your, your police station is not there it's, it's over there yes. and then and you just get tired and you, you choose not to go. This denial of fundamental rights to people by certain interested people in politics, how should our democracy manage this going forward? Because it can't continue. And how people manage to go to sleep knowing that they quote unquote got to positions denying people their rights to vote and manipulating votes. How do people feel comfortable? No, they don't have conscience anymore. These people, their conscience are sealed, seared with hot iron. So they don't think about the people. They don't think about you and I. They just think about themselves. So why do they complain about coup, coup d'etats? I mean, what is going on is a coup d'etat by pretense to the ballot. Of course. That's so it. why I do they complain that soldiers carry out coups? You know, Prof, um, you know, your, uh, uh, we, you took a trip to um, Oshodi. And, and they called it that you invaded ah, your office. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you, I, I have um, yeah. tried to compare myself often with all kinds of historic figures. 
Hannibal was not one of those I tried. <laughs> but no. now that I have reached the state of oh, Hannibal, Hannibal, and I can invade <laughs> somewhere, yeah. you see how... <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's base, it is. Uh, fortunately, I think you were both there when I carried out this invasion. That's right, we were there, and we were there with uh, you. A horde of Nigerian media were there. Yeah. So, so you can just see the inappropriateness in choice of language. Yeah. Uh, uh, by people who are supposed to be public officials. Yeah. Whose citizens, citizens we actually know. That's mm. right. It's just that Nigeria is Nigeria. Some people should not be in should not be kinds of positions. Short positions, yeah. Uh, but what can we do? Uh, I, I, is, is I think a whole lot will, will change. We just uh, mm. pray because, um, you know, I, uh, sometimes I just imagine, you know, if uh, this election, if the INEC, you know, uh, as a body does not do its job, um, you know, very well. Because you know, it all lies on them. You, you see, I, I, I know people like um, Professor uh, Yakub Mahmoud, Mahmoud Yakub, um, who are intellectuals, 